Asia, the MVP last year. Give herself a sweep, they pulls it! Hey, tries to knock it off of them, and instead it's at the hand, shot clock at four, gotta recognize. Asia Wilson says, I was driving up and one! Oh, two on the shot clock! That was a crazy... This is Rafi Kuzan, and you are tuned in to Nothing But That Sports Talk. The race for the top spot of the WNBA is heating up as I welcome to this episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk with Feet Lewis on alongside Ryan Walker. Yeah, we saw the New York Liberty pick up some big wins against the Connecticut Sun, the Minnesota Lakes, and the, the Las Vegas Aces. But the Aces managed to build up the, the build up the lead by two games in a win against the Washington Mystics. So uh yeah, let me start off the show by just asking one question. Can the Liberty cast the Aces for the top spot of the WNBA? No, probably not. I want them to. I want them to. Um, probably not, because, you know, they, they literally have to clear the board, which they can right, definitely do. <laughs> but the Aces would have to have two hiccups along the way. I don't see the problem of that of that happening. You know, we'll still keep hope, hope, um, hope and faith alive on that one, as you say. But um, remember I pointed out to you, I mean, and this is always hindsight, it's 2020, you can do that in sports all the time. But boy, if they could have the Chicago Dream game back, part of the Chicago Sky game back and the Atlanta Dream game back, we're talking a whole different scenario. You know, things are gonna happen along the road. We talked about many of their they, they lost they, the, the Washington lost first game of the season. Chicago Sky hiccup. Atlanta Dream was a bus off for them one night. They had a couple other things here and there. You know, of course they played. They lost twice to eight Vegas, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, did they lose to the Sparks? Anytime? Nah, they lost to the Dallas Wings. Dallas Wings, they lost to the Wings, who are also they another. They lost to the Wings. Both, both of them. I mean, we. I mean, to be fair, if we can't have those four home losses back, we talking about a whole different scenario. But let's not right. forget, we did win the regular season against them, just like we won, we at the very least at 500 against every <sighs> team in the WNBA this year. Right. This isn't so like I, last year where Liberty are scraping the way towards getting to the playoffs. They're scraping the way towards getting the number one seed. And number one seed, and even if they can't get the number one seed, number one seeds can lose too. We see more true. than enough basketball upsets to not to, to not to expect the Liberty to defeat uh, uh, the Aces in a possible 2-1 seed WNBA Finals matchup. But continue on. Yes. I, I think... Um... I think right now their best bet is to try to win as many games as possible and just to play their best brand of basketball going into the postseason. Um, there's nothing wrong with that two seed. They earned it. I think they should, you know, that that's most likely where they will stick at. And I think if they take care of their business like they should at the number two seed, then all the cards will align where we mostly seen it, where it would be the aces and um the Liberty with WNBA Finals. And um, we clearly know that the, the the Liberty were a very good and dominant road team. And they they went into Vegas and they won a road game there. So they know they can go there and win a road game. So in a catastrophic world, or not even a catastrophic world, in an ideal WNBA world, if the two teams go to the finals that we expect to go, they know that mentally they can win a game on the road and they they play pretty dominant basketball against the aces in their two contests at home so um it's it's just a um a matter of just playing your best brand of basketball throughout the postseason and you know you can beat these the the, the nba wmba champions with Gray and Asia and I'm um, plumbing those girls on the road and you know how dominant you are at home and you know you can really win on at home too. So the biggest thing in that series was just to be to win that road game and bring the home cooking back if you play that top seed. Now, also like you said, if the aces do not go and the eight and the Liberty do go, now we have turned into the number one seed. And we have home court clearly in a series 
in the um, WNBA Finals. And no disrespect to Dallas, because Dallas is a really good team, and clearly they did beat us. So we know that we we have our our um, our keep cut out for us if we play a ball club like that. But I think that if the Aces are gone and the Liberty go to the finals, I think they'll be so confident that they know that they'll be the best in the dominant team that it'll just be up to them to prove it on the basketball court. And we'll see what happens. So long story short, they should be fine with the two seed. Stay in that two seed. Take care of your business and try to get to that finals. And you see where the cards lay. And whoever's on the other side of that, they they play anybody. The, the Liberty are afraid of no team in the WNBA, and right now at this point, they would play anybody. Exactly, because look, they got the Connecticut Sun coming up. Then they got the Chicago Sky. Then they have to face the Dallas Wings that caps off the two game road trip. Then they come home to play Los Angeles Sparks in the in the, in the final home game against the Washington Mystics. So I could see them at least going for at minimum they're going to be four one. Because Chicago and because Chicago and LA did duke it out for the last spot in the playoffs. So, you know, they're playing with a different type of pizzazz. I mean, there's not that many postseason slots left for those teams. So we just gotta keep taking care of our business and go into the the, the final five games, even if it was three and two. You wanna go and play in a good brand of basketball so you feel confident about what you did the regular season and what your future may hold and um you know you strap it up for the playoffs and you see what happens you see where it goes yeah i mean that's the best we could do i mean like well well i told you the livery schedule the ace at the other hand they got to play the seattle storm and then they have and then and i believe from like the third all the way up to the seventh they get they have off before they have before they play at home game against the phoenix mercury well, they, well, they play on the road against Face Mercury, then they go home to play them on the Sunday afternoon. So the schedule is going to be kind of difficult, but if if we could get that one elusive Aces loss when the Liberty wins out, that'll, be, that'll help out a lot in their favor because the Liberty have three home games, like three games to play in, in the midst of the Las Vegas Aces having days off. Mm. Yes, yeah, so the, the numbers even up. So you know what? Like it's like real mathematically, it's there, and and who are we to say that the Liberty can't go five and zero in the next games? Who are we to say they can't go four and one? So we're not going to say that because we know how capable, how good this team is. Rihanna Stewart, John L. Jones, Laney, Sabrina, Vandersloot, Johansson. I mean. This team, they're they're they're, they're loaded, bro. They 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 they're so deep. It's scary, and there's two or three girls who I'm really forgetting about the team. So, so uh, disrespect to me, Ella Thornton. The, uh, the, on the, she's making shots too. My girl Dawson. I mean, this this team. Is the, this is the best, well put together team, and 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 like I kept saying in previous episodes, this is the most well developed. New York Liberty era that we've seen in quite some time. Absolutely, I, 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 they just, I'm I'm ready. I want them to win so bad, so that we could just end that narrative and just say this is the best team in in WNBA. And not excuse me, this is the best team in Liberty history. If, if they win it this year, this is the best team in Liberty history. Period. And and you know how I feel about the '90s. 2000s with the Teresa Weatherspoon, Sophia Weatherspoon, Kim Hampton, Sue Wicks, Rebecca Lobo, on and on and on. But if they win this year, they're the best Liberty team ever. Ever. Exactly. Although we watch basketball more than long enough to know that we can't, ex- we, well, I don't want to bring any negativity, but we saw enough a- a- a basketball upsets this year to not expect the worst. To not anything sleep on the lower yes. team, to, to know that ain't thinking happen in basketball. We see it in the no. NBA. We see it in Pro City. We see it. Yep. We, 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 we see it slam summer classic. Right. We will get into it in a couple minutes. But this size the point. This Liberty team, you can't you can't stop them. You just can't. No, they're 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 a tough team to beat. And when they're playing 
like they're playing right now with all, all, all everybody's clicking on all cylinders. And they're sharing the ball and defending too. So that's what makes it even more of an attraction. But when they're clicking like this on all cylinders, they're 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 really a tough team to beat. I haven't seen and I know they have the champion and last year, like, you know, um the Vegas was playing with a different kind of groove and they're 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 in the championship year this year. Sometimes you can have a little bit of a championship hangover. It's, it's in you know, it's in that sometimes it's sports. And they also, the Aces could also be playing possum. You know, they start off so blistering hot. They can be playing possum. And when the postseason comes, turn that light on, and then we're all nervous again. And then we also have to take into consideration, too, that Candace Parker will be back at some point to play for them. Just like my guy was saying the back, he's like, you're more Candace Parker. I said, Candace Parker comes back. That is a, a huge plus in addition to their team. But we also have to remember Candace Parker is at the end of her career. So it's not like she's a girl that's going to come to the team and she's going to score 30, 40 points. That's not what she's built to do now. You know what I'm saying? But that's no discredit to her. One of the greatest women's players that ever played this game, champion, gold medalist, so on and so forth. I said, Candace Parker's presence there is is not – I don't want to belittle it because her presence is huge, especially the championship savvy. But her presence on the court – they literally played the Aces in, in, in Brooklyn, and they blew them out by 30. So if Candace Parker comes, if she has 10 and 12, they still lose by 18. You know what I'm saying? Like, the other day, we played the Aces, and Aces the team. We beat that Aces team pretty good, you know? Like, we beat them pretty good. And that, that was enough eye test for me to say, you know, these girls got something going. I wouldn't want to play them. And like you said, shout out, no, no, no disrespect to the teams that are still in the post. Like we, we would never underestimate a Washington. We, we, we know we cannot underestimate Atlanta. We know we can't underestimate Chicago. We got that reality check. We can't. We underestimate those lower seats. We'll go home. Period. So we, we know. I told you too, as much as. I think the Aces are really good and dominant. Didn't I say, I, I said, I like what the Dallas Wings do. I watched them play. The, the Dallas Wings can send the Aces home. Please believe it. It's not, it's not impossible to believe. I mean, yeah, you, look at the Dallas Wings. They're literally hanging on. To, they're literally, they're up, they're literally up by a few games against the Atlanta Chiefs for the number four seed. Then you have, then you have like literally three teams tied with the fifth seed, which is the Atlanta Dream, the Minnesota Lynx, and the Washington Mystics. And then the eight seed is going to go down between the Chicago Sky and the, and the Los Angeles Sparks. The Indiana Fever are mathematically in it, but they're hanging on by a thread. By a thread. Like, literally. They have to win every game. They're one loss away from being out of playoff contention. So, <laughs> they're one more loss or win by Chicago Sky and the Sparks away from being out of contention. Although... Miracles do happen in sports, but not likely. I don't expect much for the Indiana Fever. Sorry. I tell you this much, though. Their future is bright. Yes, they do. Especially with Boston. Look at Mm -hmm. especially with Leah Boston. And if they, yes, sir. And if they decide to go the tanking routes, win the lottery, and drop either Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese, the Fever are back, (laughs) or at least they're one step closer to being back. Fever pitch. No, they they um like you said with with the young lady, the number one pick this year, Leah Boston. They they were um a lot more competitive than and better than we all thought, right? We, we, they they were they were competitive this year. You know they drove the Liberty to overtime. They 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 played tough. They just didn't lay down. And I respect that about that. I respect that the coaching staff has kept the resolve. And they see the vision, and they 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 know that it's long term. They 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 want results now, but they know that the girls are growing towards that and expect growth more than the wins. And I think if they continue on that, and I think if the fever even can get in six, the top any anywhere below a six pick, that's going to be an addition to their team, and they just need to keep building. But, you know, that's a whole different conversation with the field. So we transition to. 
they're going to be fine at that two seed. They just got to go one day at a time and just, you know, stay the course and believe. Yeah, that's a fact. But let's just get, let's, let's just ask in this WBA conversation with one thing. If you're the code to the Indiana Fever, excuse me, if you're the code to the, the New York Liberty, which team do you want to face in the first round? Atlanta, Minnesota, or Washington? Or Chicago? I mean, with all respect to all teams, I, I would say from those four teams, I would probably say Minnesota. But, you know, that's a tough call, too. Minnesota did beat us in a contest. Atlanta did beat us in a contest. I think we have a chance to play them again, you said. You know, um, no, nah, we finished all the games against the for the season. Being against Chicago, Chicago's a, a team we have a chance to, to maybe sing some redemption song on. But I think from all those four teams, definitely without a doubt, matchup wise, and and not complaining on the fact Minnesota didn't beat us one, one time, I think Minnesota probably would be the better match for them to, you know, psychologically and mentally go in and. You know, get a pole. You know, it, it's like it, in different genre, but same sport. When Knicks and Knicks and our Cavs, the Knicks and the Cavs, it was I, to me it was very key for the Knicks to win that series because you know there were some people that thought the Cavs would win the series and the Cavs, you know, proved it and, and deserved to get that rec- recognition per se. But um, I think when the, when the Knicks beat the Cavs in that series. That that now gave them the complete confidence. Like, yo, we knew we belonged here, but we're here, and we're gonna make a statement. And I think that's one of the things that will come to true with these WNBA teams. There are a few teams that can definitely do it, but you you got to go out there and and do it. And then when you do that, then it's gonna be like, man, you know, we gotta pay attention to these these lower seeds, these lower pops, because the dogs are coming to play. You know, so. Minnesota is a better matchup, but you know sometimes you never know. Sometimes you think you get the matchup you want, you want it, and you get it, and and there's nothing that you can handle with it. So we, we'll go one one game at a time. Yeah, but that's true. Of course, if you ask me, out of the teams I just mentioned, I would pick none of the above and just hope that we get the Los Angeles Sparks in the first round. And somehow, I, that's why I really want to play. I didn't want to disrespect. No, I was saying, can we play the Sparks? <laughs> I mean, come on. Even though the Sparks, did, I mean, come on. They they proven to be vulnerable to lose games. They just lost to the Chicago Sky. They lost to the Seattle Storm. And that's why I rather play. Unless Shanae and Ogu, unless Shanae and Neka come back, unless Shanae comes back. I mean, Lexi Brown's out for the season, but unless Shanae comes back and drop and drop, and drop about like and get and drop twenty points, they're not. Yeah, we're gonna have an easier time beating, beating Los Angeles Sparks. Sorry, Kurt Miller. Call it like we see it, right? Call it like we see it. Because I don't know if I want to co- go against a show Sher- Reeve led coach Minnesota Lynx. I understand it's a different roster, but let's not forget she was she was a coaching staff for four championships. Remember that dynasty they they built in the 2010s? Sherelle Reeve was part of that. I don't know if yeah, I want to go against her. That, that, um, she's like the like one of those Pat Riley Eric Spolster minds of, of the game, you know. They see yeah, exactly. the architects they know how to build. But how much have you always, I mean, throughout the years watching Sherelle Reeve be the coach? I know it's kind of random. It's not part of the show. But I'm only asking this since you said that Minnesota is the links on the team you want to face in the first round. Like, what are, what are your overall thoughts about Sherelle Reeve as a coach and a person to the WNBA landscape? Oh, she's a she's a quiet paragon. You know, because she doesn't even want the prestige or the, or, or the hoopla. She just cares about the game and building the culture and doing it the right way. And um what we you know what, what she's bringing to the table, like you said, is phenomenal. And to give these ladies an, an opportunity and a chance at the at this round ball, you know, we call basketball is just it's super and, and it's great for the culture. And you know, we need to keep it going. And like I said, you know, I was talking with my commissioner um Rev on the phone, but I told you we were just at the crunch time gym doing um uh it was a, a Long Island Nets crunch time combine where four guys would get the opportunity to try out and be on the Long Island Nets to possibly make a slot on the on the GD team. And this thing for doing interviews at the gym. And it's like 
with the whole, you know, announcing game and with basketball and everything, one thing that we was bringing up is like, you know, it's not easy to do this stuff to begin with. And when you when you create a lane and now you create this lane and, and you, you're trying to figure out whatever your niche is, you, you got to just stay with it. You know, it, it, sometimes I tell you with the camera too, you know, and I, I'm, I'm venturing off too. We're going to, you know, coming back to that the whole prism. You know, there's certain things that, you know, editing wise me to us like, you like, what well, if you try it? See, it. you know, look at it. Hey, if you try to buy it and it didn't work, yeah, but I said, you know, it, it, it never hurts to try because you, 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 sometimes we just don't, we never know, you know? So I'm rambling on that one, but that, that is just, you know, we were just, me and him was just talking about that and <clears throat> with opportunities and things that come in this game. And, you know, when you do have an opportunity, you just got to just seize it. Exactly. This Sherelle Reeves, she calls Simone Augustus, Sylvia Files. Oh my God. Maya Moore. Maya Moore. All the, Maya Moore. Um, um, Jesse McCartney, former Neo Liberty. That's the one oh, player I remember from the 06, from the Liberty playoff teams that lost to Detroit shot back in the 2000s. Um, who, um, am, am they I had a stranglehold on the game. They were really <laughs> scary for years. Exactly. Only lose to the, only lose to the Fever in 2012 and the Sparks in 16. It took a freaking put back layup by Nick Agumik to lose to the Spark, Sparks that first time before they redeemed himself and beat him in five games the next year in, in 17. He, in the six, and they didn't even have to go. To, and he wasn't even played at the Target Center. They were playing at the University of Minnesota. I remember. Right. <laughs> Which I thought was a good just but I don't, they, 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 I don't know what they were doing playing at a college gym for the finals, but. This is that's so that's an example of disrespect that they do to WNBA teams. Yeah, totally. And Augustus and those girls, they were so dominant. They were so I've seen some dominant teams, you know, like you know, the Houston early days, Kim Farad and like Cynthia Cooper and Carol Scroops and Tina Thompson and then Minnesota team there with Augustus and uh, uh, Maya Moore. Who was the point guard you said again? She was a dog. She was tough. The whole team was tough, and it really put a stranglehold. It, it, it was scary playing them. You could see teams wanted no problems of playing them. It was so good offensively. And then they all started locking in defensively. And um, big shout-outs to Maya Moore for chasing, for always, you know, keeping her head sturdy and not letting anything deter her from whatever she felt her most exactly. drive was. Maya Moore does not hit that buzzer beater in game four. They do not beat the Indiana Fever in 2015. She, she, she's so tough. She had a against Liberty in Westchester. I know you remember that one. She's a she dog. And those teams are dogs. And like you said, Liberty now has potential to put themselves if they can do some good things over these next few years in those same categories as really historic and good WNBA basketball teams. <laughs> yeah. And um another topic that I mentioned that I want to get into or the that I really want to get into. Um let's just talk about uh I, I already mentioned the slaves of a classic and uh slaves of a classic these these players caught the flag. I'm talking about Cooper flag. And then uh, Captain Jack was in the house, you know, Captain Jack, going go to play OSL, overtime elite, early, that was announced earlier today, and is committed to play to your favorite college basketball team's rival, North Carolina. That that combo all the way at Rucker Park was just so scary. If you see the highlights, like that, that where I and Jack was put was one of the the did did some of the thousands of dunks that was taking place that day, and then freaking Cooper flag game time shot. I know we're mad late talking about this, but but you haven't been on the show in a few weeks because of the because of the peace tournament, which we'll get into later. But what are your overall thoughts on that play by Cooper flag and the overall atmosphere down there and the Rucker? <clears throat> Oh, we all know that Cooper Flag is ready, and shout out to Shane and uh, Talk Spicy because their their line was, um, 
uh, what was it? We salute the flag or appreciation to the flag. No, it's no, a pledge allegiance to the flag. That's what they said. So um, Cooper Flag is a big time player. This is why he's reclassified. He has um, clear aspirations of being a pro and he will be a pro when it's his time. Um, he, like you said, the way the reclassifying goes, you know, he might not ever go to a Division One college. He might play for like an overtime or a lead or a GD get up right away to try to go to the league. So, um, but he's phenomenal. Um, when you're like six, nine, six, ten already, you can shoot, got a handle. You know what I mean? You can hit mid range, great defensively, intimidated, loves to go to the basket and finish at the rim. Um, it, it, it was a joy to, I didn't go that day when I watched online. It was a joy to watch Cooper out here playing. And they got a good, good nucleus with him. And <clears throat> like you said before, Ian Jackson. Um, Cardinal Hayes but now transferring out. We'll be at OSL. Um, the rich just keep continuing to get rich. And um that that's great for him down there at OSL Bobs and you know, he can do that one year. But I I know why he did that too, because you know, he got nothing else to prove at Cardinal Hayes. He was a a, a Captain League champion. They got invited to the, the top league and so on and so forth. Now he gotta go to OSL national. To make sure he's playing against that proper schedule and getting used to guys that are going there because OSL National will prepare him for ACC play at North Carolina where nobody's going to be baiting you and nobody's going to care if you're from New York. New York you got to go out there and play your game and make it happen because everybody, those are the type of stuff that players will come at you more because they want to be the one to take that name for the title off. You know, so shout out to him, big OSL. And a lot of high school kids, too. I know you keep seeing all them kids, and that's that, that's the plan for Luha. But he got something going on all those over there as well, too. But, yeah, the fan tournament was, was phenomenal, good for the kids. It's always good for the kids. Yeah, that's better for the kids, the environment, the weekend, the goodies they get, and the stuff they be around. So, Rock Park, shout out to it. And, you know, another one. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? As a Duke fan, I remember when when we did big podcast episode several years ago, and I when I told you about Tyler Hansbrook, and you, you talk about how he was giving your your D team nightmares. How much of a nightmare will Iron Jack be when you finally go when you finally go up against your blue, two Blue Devils in the near future? You see, he should do well. You know, he can play and score at all three levels, and he's a tough kid. He'll, he'll rebound it. He'll be back at it. He should he should do he should do fine. You know, uh, if Ian plays his cards right, I can see him in college for two years in North Carolina and, and possibly becoming a pro. Yeah. That is going to be insane. And another Rucker Park event that happened this week, happened a few weeks ago, and I know you already briefly touched up on it. We we didn't get to go in depth on this. I'm talking about my Gersh Park with, for the boys and girls winning the New York versus New York championship earlier this month. That, that happened a week prior. Yeah, I know I'm kind of like going backwards as far as events, but you, you since you briefly touch up on it, we have to go in depth. I mean, I mean, based on what you saw, what were your overall thoughts on Gersh Park for the boys and girls get another New York versus New York title? No, you know, I went on <clears throat> on and on about this, how, you know, you know, Gersh got a good program and they're, they're for the high school and they're blessed to have a lot of the core kids that know each other and have a nucleus and play with each other. But, you know, we always talked about how in PSAL, public, public school-wise from New York City, Brooklyn is the better borough from all the boroughs now. So when you're getting some of these top good kids from Brooklyn that play meet each other outside of the, the, the their, their seasons or in LA Fitness or Exports or whatever, or outside leagues or respective AAU teams, even to play against each other, they're so savvy with their games and nuances, it becomes so easier. I think that's why it's a difficulty when it's time for them to look for stuff by the coach. Like, all right, where are the guys? The, the guys are everywhere. They're doing everything. And it was, um, you know, it, 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 th those players, you just can't wait to see over time. I want to see what Ian Jackson's going to do at OSL before even, you know, getting to North Carolina. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But, Too bad we couldn't make it to go down there, but you know what? The, the travel, I, you know what? That's the conversation when we get off the air, but yeah. And, and then the other transition is that the Gersh 
boys and girls, they just have a great program. And for high school, it's better suited. The other parks, Lincoln Park is catching up, but the other parks have to do better now with competing and putting themselves in position because it's it's like this bragging rights, but 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 it's not bragging rights, but just to have somebody Dyfin has to put up a better performance than they put up the last two years. It's just not, it's not acceptable. You know, you know, and just other teams in general. And thank God they got a little redemption. I guess last night winning in the twenty five k. They didn't win the twenty five k, but at least the the pro am Dyfin team beat Gersh. You know what I mean? But yeah, you got that one. Challenge. You got that one. Obviously, because the missed free throws. At, because of those four missed free throws with like two minutes left in the game when they were down by like four points. And while we're on the subject of the co- talk about the Clash Cup, well, yeah. <laughs> All right, Diamond, you got that one. You got that one. You got that one. Let's be, but let's be fair. If it weren't for the missed free throws, it would have been a totally different mindset. But yeah, Ty- but this is the same Diamond that eventually forfeited with six minutes left in the game against uh, the anti Wyatt team. Because there was a lot of apparently there was a lot of drama going on. They Stevenson had a little bit of an altercation with one of the players from Duck Team Tightman. So yeah, I, I, and even that I don't even want to. I, I thought that was, you know, one of my guys. We had a group chat. One, two, or three of the guys that we go to Dykeman with together. One of my guys from Long Island, two other my nephew that's in the Bronx, and my other cat that's living in the Bronx now. And my 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 brother and my guy was like, yeah. Um, cause we were talking about going. I said, "Listen, if y'all not driving out to Coney Island, I'm not going. I've already established that I'm not doing a two hour, two hour thing. You're not doing none of that." So, when I said, "Watch," I said, "Listen, I, I can watch on Clash TV. It's free as day, and I don't have to worry about nothing." Story, long story short, now the next day we look, and he's like, "Oh, it was a movie last night. The Coney Island was a movie. Things started late. Stayed out till later. We could have went. I should have went." It was a movie. I said that wasn't a movie. I said there was a lot of foolishness like, going on last morning. You would have taken it was a nightclub. The nightclub was street ball. Literally, I said the announcers were not are arguing amongst the announcers. The the, the, the game got testy. It almost turned into this. It almost turned into that. It ended up being late. Uh, the championship game that was they, they wouldn't give them a proper time to play or shake out. So there's no room for that. Plus the shenanigans that went on, I'm good, man. I don't, I don't need none of that energy. But shout out, you know, you know, for the whitehead guys for getting the 25k. I thought they should have, you know, canceled and make the guys come back the next day and play the last 6:32. But that team doesn't handle that. So, yeah, I know. It's I know it's kind of difficult for you to talk about on the air or in any kind of scenario. But but I was I was speaking to Coach Matthews or Coach Matt. Coach Matt earlier today, he's like the coach for the South Shore JV team. Mm-hmm. He was telling me about some, he was telling me there was some crazy stuff about Lance, the altercation with Lance and then the fans who crew to get back to the court. It's just a lot of stuff that he said that I'm not going to bring up on the air, but this goes to show that, that street ball can be dangerous when it's not organized correctly. Correct. That's what you get in the road, yes. And, and what did I tell you not too long ago when you would tell me about the situation that happened at Dykeman? There's always something going on with people living in that type of environment, or, or either like if you're not going there to announce or or take video shots or pictures or just to enjoy the games, do not go there. Do not go there. Guys, do not comprehend for some reason. If you don't need to be in that environment, don't be there. If you're not going to these environments, these basketball rooms that we go to, to be a plus or to add to the environment, man, go somewhere else with that. You know, me, but you know, this whatever guys make. You know, you, you see a lot of these guys on the sidelines sometimes, and you see guys or guys there, and it's like they have no business being. There. They're not basketball guys. They're not even in savvy with the sport. One of their guys is making to a high different level. So seven hundred people from the block to come to show up. And, and and that's not that's not that's not well if you're there for no purpose. You know, why are you there? But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. That is not how you bring peace to basketball. You know how to bring peace to basketball this past this past week, which is why 
we were off the air for a couple of weeks because you was praying beast of basketball where where your whole self got started. I'm talking about the peace tournament for those that don't know that you went down there and cover. Tell us a little bit of the backstory about how the opportunity came about and how do you enjoy being an announcer at the peace tournament with Slim and a couple of the guys he went down to Canada with. Well, um, Slim and my my guy White, got me follow on Instagram, me back to president. When my guy Dwight, we call him White. Um, you know, first of all, it was just it was phenomenal. Beautiful, beautiful region, great, beautiful people, family atmosphere. It was phenomenal. So well, I was blessed to have the opportunity to be there because a few years ago when White White had this vision to do this tournament, this this form of different tournament, cash money tournaments, we were working on different things. And when he was having that vision, he was just, you know, hitting up a lot of guys outside leagues to see, you know, if he could get this one team to play that and go to that. So during those ventures, he happened to stumble across the Peace Tournament. He, uh, I guess he must have inboxed Corvell, the guy who runs him. He's like, yo, what's up with this? And, um, how can I bring a team? I want to bring a team from New York, such as us from here and everything. So, I, you know, we're getting the discussion, getting all the logistics. But you need passport wise and da da He was like, okay, I'm going to try to see if I can work on it go do it. And while he's having a conversation, he's like, yo, you know, not for nothing. He's like, yo, I am I entertain too. So he's like, if you get an or whatever, like, I'll come, you know, for nothing. Like, let me figure it out. And he's like, cool. He's like, I right, bet. He's like, listen, if you want to come and you want to, you know, pay your such and such and try to be and, and come do, you're more than welcome. He's like, I'll figure you out if I like you. I'll bring you back. He goes to Corvell, which is one of the main guys that run that peace tournament. He does a phenomenal job the weekend. And because of that, now Corvell comes in. He's like, yo, you were good. I like that vibe. That vibe made me feel like, you know, when I used to be a worker park, then he's like, I want you back. He's like, he's like, well, why don't you see, you know, he's telling me, like, why don't you see if you can bring some more guys? He's like, you know, I got two other guys that, you know, I know announced too, like my brothers that I know that they bring that same kind of energy. So he was like, yeah, bring them through. So now throughout that, that's when a couple months ago when White presented the idea to me, like, yo, Robert, right, you want to go to Canada? I said, heck yeah, you know, to do announcing. And, um, you know, he was like, listen, they're, they're paying for our room and our board. We're not getting paid to announce for, say, for the days. But, you know, we VIP at all the parties. We don't pay for nothing to eat, drink. We're, we're good. We're, we're covered. So shout out to White, Maybach, the president. He was the one that did great last year, that gave us the opportunity to get the invite through him on what they bestowed on him to go this year. And we were in Halifax, Nova Scotia, beautiful. We were in North Preston, which is the most predominantly black neighborhood in all of Canada. So, you know, it, this was like surreal for me because to go to HBCU, the oldest HBCU in history, and then to go to North Preston, the most predominantly black neighborhood in Canada, and me being born in Toronto, Canada, and them telling me now that the Underground Railroad also passed through here, it's just so uncanny. And that's why this weekend just hit so much more different for me because the people are so beautiful. They treated us so well. They 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 picked us up. They 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 if we were hungry or thirsty, they gave us whatever. They gave us a show and they showed us how they do it, they do it out there. And we absorbed it and we brought our New York energy out there. And the last day they loved us at the university. We did big things. Shout out to my guy, um, Lindell Wington. Um, two-way contract on that Milwaukee Bucks team. Um, G League status. And he's doing um really, really well for himself. And I told Sean, let me get you a, a, a the glass of gold here. Oh my God. So um yeah, we we um as you can see, I got the direct connects with Linda Wellington and you know my goal is I'm definitely gonna bring him down for crunch time and probably bring him down for some other things. So he's got this he's got the two way contract with the Milwaukee Bucks. The G League team is the Iowa Hawks. But um the Iowa team plays in that upper part of Canada that's right above I guess Milwaukee, Chicago, Michigan area and so on and so forth. But he's got a two way contract. So Listen, you can start off the season with them on that 12-man roster, or you can start G, two, three guys get hurt, and then now that's your opportunity. You know, we don't want to look at it that way. We don't want nobody to get hurt. But family get in. He's a good person, great person. 
treated me with so much love and respect. He loved what I did on the microphone. He loves my energy. Like, you know, the guys love you. I know what you guys do. And um, we just network with so many great people, um, so many great parties. One of the nights I had to say, I tell the guys, I'm not going out. I said, nope, I'm going to go sleep. I'm leaving partying like rock stars on top of doing this work. We need rest. So, um, but like I said, Rafi, I can't explain it more than work. It was so great. They treated us like rock stars. They, they took care of us. We went on and made sure we put on a great show for them. So shout out Corvell, Miranda, Knuckles, Tootie, uh, uh, just just the whole family. There's a bunch of them I'm just all leaving out and their names. Everybody will come to me in a second. But Mickey, Mickey was amazing to us down there. The DJs were great. Uh, uh, the, 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 I ended up being in three rap videos. Shout out to Kilo too. She's got me coming down next year in June to do a wedding. Now I'm Adam Sandler. So, you know, I've got to work on my other realms of that. But it, it was a great tournament. And talking about feeling great and feeling free and peaceful, that's exactly what it was. And the biggest thing on why it's the peace tournament now is because years ago it was the black tournament. It was a violent event that happened and they exonerated the tournament and they exonerated the black tournament name. So when they were now given in the last few years the onus to start it up back again, the name of the tournament was the Peace Tournament. So everything about what we do is peace and talk about a way of reuniting communities, man, was just it was beautiful. And I don't got no more words to say. It was just phenomenal. I can only imagine. I mean, you were down to, yeah, I could tell by the video footage, you were down to like you don't have to come out to New York and you don't have two jobs and you don't have kids and you don't have a wife to go home to. You were literally uh, down there. <laughs> I mean, don't, uh, don't, disres uh, don't disrespect to your family. I mean, I know how much your family means to you, but you were down, down there like you didn't need, like you don't have to come out to New York or like you've never been to New York before. Like, seriously. Yeah. And you know what? It was like, it was vacation, but it wasn't vacation because it was work. Mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people keep saying. They keep saying, yo, how'd you go down there? Such, 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 I said, and I just explained to my guys and I'm like, yeah, I might go down there next year three times. Because I have one guaranteed wedding and one person that's like on standby, like what they want to do, or we're going to go back down for the peace tournament. So minimum, I'm going back down there twice, one in June, one in August. And like, my guy's like, oh, did you tell your woman? Did you say? I said, what do you mean did I tell my woman? I said, one, I, I don't have a choice but to tell my woman. And two, it, it's one of those things that I didn't want to sound pompous. I was like, I don't have to tell her about this. I said, I'm getting paid to go do a wedding in a whole different place where they're paying for everything. So I don't think she's going to have a problem. You know what I'm saying? So I, and, and the same thing, like, the, the peace tournament, and, and, and this is since we talking so candidly, we went out to hang out all the time on the nights, and of course all of us and all of us are our respective ladies at home, and of course there were beautiful women out there, and beautiful women in Canada in general, but what I kept stressing a lot of people to say was like, before they all reason, bro, this is a business trip. We got games to announce Friday. We got games to announce at 10 o'clock start Saturday. We got games to take care of and announce 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock Sunday. So on top of this, we still got to stay focused in who we are because we got to go announce for people that we got to bring that full energy of New York to Canada. So they see how our realms do it and get used to it and love it. And that's exactly what happened. So this was, this was to me, as much as we had fun, we were like, yo, definitely right. We're looking at it, I'm like, man, I don't want to come back. You know what I'm saying? But this was business and this was work. So when we came back from Canada and I had to take, I wanted to go to work right off. I was too physically, I had to take another day just to rest and get my brain back and mind back mentally, physically in order to, to do what we do. So it was phenomenal, and they treated us great. Definitely was like, oh, I love it out here. And I'm, I'm not lying, man. By 45, I don't like the way things are going in New York. I'm at, and my son will be 21 by then and, and going on to college, and now he'll be a big boy, so now I just got to put him in certain grown man plateaus and say, hey, listen, now, now you're on your own. Now you got to figure it out. And by 45, I don't like New York. I'm going to, I'm going to Canada. Either Toronto mm -hmm. or Halifax would be my new home.
care. No. <laughs> I could only imagine. I mean, seriously, you do. You got an up, and I gotta congratulate you on getting those opportunities, Ryan. You you, you do. You you really work. You, you really work on yourself. It's just, I'm telling you, man. It, it's so surreal right now because to have that opportunity for the peace tournament. And like I said, just a few hours ago, I did interviews with Crunch Time. We had the Crunch Time Combines. We had some top players from the city in Long Island. And we we um, gave them opportunities to get a roster slot on the Long Island Nets to try out a seat to make those realms. And I just knocked out about, com combined maybe about 25 interviews. All the players, and then I had five interviews afterwards about their, their analysis how they felt afterwards. And I'm just listening to my commissioner. He called me and he, he was talking. And we always talk basketball. You know, I always tell you, we have those meetings. We sit around, especially how we have to map things out and who's doing this and who's doing that. And he was like, you know, he's like, wavy. He was like, man, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you for coming out and doing the interviews. Like, he said, I know, you know, this stuff takes time and effort and everybody's not good at speaking in front of the camera and, you know, doing those things and so on and so forth. He's like, I know you just came back from Canada, so it's like you're 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 re getting yourself back acclimated, and it's like the end of the summer, so it's like this is the time when like we don't want to do a bunch of working things, but but and that's what I said. So I said this is our dead time of the year, but there's no dead time in basketball, so now it's just more calculated events because there's still a bunch of things. We got an event coming October seventh. We got first time winner coming December January, but we have our just group league going on now. There's PSA of basketball about to come. Catholic schools about to come. We got middle school events we're about to do. I mean, so there's a lot of things that's going on. You know, what I mean, I got ISA around the corner to watch games down there. But then I got middle school to Brooklyn coming in October where I'm helping out with my man. You know, I promised to be there pretty frequently and do numbers with him. So there's there's always dead time, but it's always flowing time. So he thanked me for that. But one thing he did too is like he's like baby, like you're getting better. And you're 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 getting a, a sound now in a niche, and you know all those times we would we would say stuff. We always said we, we did well. The energy's right, but when we was giving that criticism, it wasn't because we 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 didn't want to see. It's because we wanted to see you do well. And now I can literally see the growth in my last few years as an announcer. I can see how my 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 play by play skills on basketball is going to a high level and even my interview skills not interviewing now is just going to a hundred different realms and and I write and so you know that's no disrespect to, to any of the announcers in New York and I, you know you know how I feel about the chain I think he's the, the best Joe Pope is one of the greatest one of the legends there's so many others yeah you know uh, man and you know, we have so many great MCs in New York, in my opinion. We have and, and everybody with different energy. We have the Heroes Johnnies. And then we got the Hecklers. My man, of course, then we announced my brother, my man, me back white, the president, Talk Spicy, uh, 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 Fly Ta, uh, Voice of My City, Well. Uh, I mean, and there's a there's a million of them that I'm forgetting now. I mean, they're just so many really good MCs. And so everybody that's so different, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's the, the best thing about us. We're just all so different and we all have a different sound. But one thing that I can say that for myself, I, I take out of all of them, I can MC, I can write, I can do a play by play, I can do interviews, I can do commentary, and a lot of them can't do all of that. Like some of them might do one or two or three. But when you could write, you know, I could turn around to somebody and not stop doing announcements and say, man, I wanted to be a writer tomorrow. And and because I have the expertise when I do it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? So now, now that's the other thing he's saying is like you, you're you're developing so much more skills with with all these different realms that you always have something that you can do and bring to the table. So I, I it was great to hear those words from him. And my other commissioner Mo and all those guys about the growth and everything, and we're just gonna just keep working because no matter what, I was told you that we, we, we're always gonna find great, great niches everywhere. I'm always gonna do work with you. With nothing but the sports talk. We've been together for years. We've, you know, so many different plateaus. You know, I, I do stuff for I Love Bebo, 
They love me with the interviews. I'm, I'm one of the voices at Crunch Time Basketball. We just made that merger with these guys at the Peace Tournament. I'm getting a lot of top NBA and college guys' numbers in the phone now who I can start bringing out to do for certain different realms. We got this. We, we do podcasts. We, we connect with other people. So, you know, we don't – that's why no matter how many times and I'm going off now, I said I don't care if five people watch this tonight. I don't care if 500 watch it or view it. What we're doing – it's integral to the culture, and we got to keep doing it because no matter what, in 25, 10, 15 years, not even be surprised, somebody might be looking at these archives one day. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you. I appreciate all the love, and I'm just going to just keep working, man, because <clears throat> we, we still got a lot of different levels and places to get to. Exactly. And as you know this, for what you well, I started nothing but that sports talk is nothing but that b-ball talk in 2008. Yes. <clears throat> it, it, for those who that before you that just started to jump on. It, it started off as a straight podcast and podcasting. And podcasting. My very first well, aside from my aside from my cousins and my friends from LIU, Christina Williams and Ari were my first special guest. Wow. Then a year later was <laughs> then a year later was those wrestling girls, Patricia. Rogers and Krista B, shout out to them. Mm -hmm. then, then was Monica McNutt. Then was this lady named Bailey O'Carro, who's now who's now she was a, she was a reporter at Arizona. Now she's a reporter at San Francisco. Shout out to her. You came along when we ran to each other at the Balkan Center when I failed to get tickets to, to the Kyrie Irving Invitational, and for some reason that Kyrie Irving Invitational at the Balkans never happened ever again. But whatever. I'm so sad. I had like 500 tweets a day before. I'm like, oh no, I don't have anything. <clears throat> I don't, I don't never again, but don't worry about it. We started doing our shows in studio, and the only reason why we resorted to doing everything virtual is because of the pandemic. Now, I'm back. I came back out. I made my comeback in 2013. Well, technically, 2020, excuse me, 2023. Well, technically, 2022 because uh, the Nike Switch Classic South Shore, but. I made my in-person interview come back in college at my alma mater, covering games at my alma mater to covering games at the Atlantic 10 tournament, the WNBA draft, Pro City, the Bay 3, HBCU All-Star Summer Dreams Classic. The grind just doesn't stop. And after that year, there was no more Kyrie ever in invitation? Nope. Not that I know of. Yikes. But, it, you know, it's... um. But don't worry, know, there'll it, be more surprises coming for nothing but that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and one of the great best things that you did, and, you know, I, I job during, the, during those times, one of the best things that you did, both of those were good. When you went to nothing but that sports talk, that was, like, genius. Because you, you just want to show how, how diverse you are. You know, and of course, we we talk basketball. Listen, we we, we need to talk basketball all day to, to to the casket drops. But you know, with you doing nothing but the sports talk, it just shows you how diverse and how eclectic you can be. And then the best thing that happened for both of us is that we, we got around each other because I always used to follow the WNBA game, but you know, being around you made me. Wanted to follow it so much more, and 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 be on point, and 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 know what I'm like. I said I can't be in conversation with him and be bland. I wanna I wanna know what I'm talking about. So I had to study and research more and look into the game more. And 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 and, and like I said, I always do it. And then, you know I watch every sport. Jesus, I'm going to the U.S. Open next week for crying out loud for tennis. You know what I'm saying? But but, but I just you know, wanted to make sure that I knew everything. And then, you know, we come around in categories, we talk about stuff, and I, one day I was like, well, I think, man, we, we talk about no hockey. And he's like, yo, I don't know. I said, but you know what? You know a little bit. And you know what? You just, you, you, you piggyback off me because, you know, I know a lot more about hockey, you know, and, 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 and other things and, and baseball and certain things like that. So when we get that, it's like we were just both learning from each other. Like, you're telling me about the girls' game in high school. And I'm like, crap, I got a I gotta get my girls' knowledge back up in high school back up. So that I'm I'm I wanna be equal to my counterpart. And then, and you just made me like I would tell you about the street ball game and this other realms, and then you would tell me about this side and, and this side. And I'd be like, you know, now now we're just sitting here 
and we literally we're just absorbing each other's intellect on brains on sports and nothing but the sports talk was such a way more better marketing move because now you can just talk about it. exactly i'm not just doing podcast interviews no more i'm doing zoom into i'm doing zoom press conference interviews i'm doing I'm doing I'm doing studio interviews. I'm studios. I'm recording. I need to have my own personal highlights. I mean, I don't mind taking highlights from the television, but so, but there are times, but there are going to be events where the highlights are not where games are not televised. I want to capture my own highlights so I can put it onto this. Hundred percent. Exactly. All and, uh, exactly. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. In the future, don't be surprised if another name change comes in for nothing but that sports talk because it was something that's in the world. Because it's in, the, it's in the works. Because you know, I want to be myself. I bet. I mean, I don't know if you saw my interview with Bianca Peart a few weeks ago. She, I mean, I did a little conversation with her. She talked about, talk about, yeah, uh, yeah, you gotta change that logo because I'm not gonna really get into it if all I'm seeing is balls dribbling around. So you know, it's the logo change I did with myself holding the camera from that picture I took when I was in Lansing Ten Tournament. So I kind of like used that as part of my redesign. That's a good, you know, be, be crafty. Not to least listen. I mean, I can't do nothing about some of the other stuff she told me to make to adjust to, to get people interested in my brand, but I can do that. Hey, and 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 um, you're you know you're good with you know the editing. So see um, what what you can create and what prototype you can do, and I'm I'm all for it. I support it. Exactly, just like we should always support the fact. Just like we should. We I mean. But this one question: Should we support the fact that a certain track and field star say that the NBA champion shouldn't be considered a world champion? Question. Transition. I I watched the game when you said I, I agree with the guy on on a thing. I I told you I said that that's that's a metaphor, <laughs> guys. Why are we so? What is wrong with us in twenty twenty? We're so sensitive. We're so literal, too much with words. Like, we should be literal. The NBA World Champions label. Clearly, it's not a world championship. Like I said, like, so I know I get it because it's not a. You're not playing the, the Olympics is the world championships. The world championships is a world championship. You know, but it's just it's just a way. Being that you know, in the United States of America, I guess they view as everything as being the upper echelon. If you play in the NBA. As much as global as we see the game is now, because it's everywhere, we we all probably can agree that the NBA is still the highest potential of professional basketball in the stratosphere. Same thing with the MLB, right? Even though MLB is such a cultural game, so the, the exactly. best players the MLB are series, everywhere. The series is called the World Series. Emphasis series. on world. And you know what? The NBA Finals. I'm, t- I'm literally looking at it right now on Google. The NBA Finals, but from 1950 to 1985, it was originally called the NBA World Championship Series. Correct. But we're not going to talk about that now, are we? No. And you say, and, and you want to make that comment? No allows. Like, when, what are we talking about here? You know. Yeah, I, 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 when I, guys talk about, you know, these big sports guys, not as Cowboy fans, they all these guys, they're like, you know, the Giants have 10 world championships, but we don't sit here and, you know, talk about the 1920s or 1930s, per se. I mean, come on, bro. Like, at the end of the day, NFL, yeah, 10 NFL championships. I mean, before yes. the Super Bowl era, we, the Super Bowl era, right. we got four, but it still counts. 10. Ten. That means we, we've won the pinnacle 14 times in our history. You know, but but you know, so what what I agree with it though is that it, it is um it, it's it's not the world champion, but it is the world championship, and we we should just leave it alone. We know what we all mean and what they mean when you say that. If you if you're playing in the MLB and the MLB is the highest regards of talent of MLB talent, and they still play, they go culturally. I mean, internationally to get players. Same thing with um, hockey. Blah, blah, blah. It, it, you're winning a world championship, per se. It doesn't have to be for the entire world, but there are some worlds that you won championship for. It is what it is. I, I got no problem. I think everything you said was right. Yeah, everything you said was right. Ubi. And we're going to continue trying to be world champions and building what we build right now. That's pretty much all I got to say. <laughs> like, seriously. 
I, 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 man, I want. I, I wish the Liberty could be the world champion this year. World. We're gonna be. Well, trust me, the Liberty will get it done. 